Thomas, who's actually the world champion drone pilot. He's like a rock star. And when we were talking to his father, who was there with him, he was sort of saying, you know, Thomas was was going down this particular path and going to go to uni and, and in engineering and so forth. But he's doing so well in his career that that university path may not actually be where he needs to go. The best short films for lifelong learning are recommended by teachers for teachers. This is Short Films Teachers Love with your host, Richard Lee. I'm curious, and, and this leads me sort of fairly early on into this, uh, this film called Most Likely to Succeed. So I'm curious about where on your journey you saw that, that film because that's a pretty major, major film. Yeah. I spent quite a while working at the Department of Education in both um, the central and regional offices. And when we started talking about the concept of the tech schools and what that meant, um, we we referred to this most likely to succeed film. So it's based over in the US and what it really is about is encouraging um, schools to innovate and make a change and supporting young people with project-based learning and essentially helping them with those transferable skills that we hear about all the time. We divide the day up uh, in high schools into bits of time, you know, into 40 or 50 minute blocks typically, and then we ring bells and people start to shuffle around the building and do something else. That's an organisational device, it's not an educational principle. Ten university heads in 1890 said, in 11th grade, everyone should learn chemistry. In senior year, everyone should learn physics. A lot of these subjects are great, but these priorities were, were dictated 124 years ago. The old blue collar industrial model of education is already gone. We're already living in its wake. What happens to society when hundreds of millions of people have that aimless, rudderless feeling of, I've been replaced by a very small box? I don't know if there's a solution. From what I can gather, there's several parts to it. It starts with the, you know, the deep blue the chess champion computer, and then moves on to Watson that beat the guy in Jeopardy, and you know, and it's That's it's that right. whole sort of history of the, you know, factory model of learning, and and the shift that we need to make to hands-on learning and making stuff, shifting from passing a test to engaging, and and then the rest of it is this example of the the two students, which is really which brings it to life. So did that inspire you to move? in the direction you are with the tech schools? I guess I had the opportunity to start working on the, the initial scope of what what is a tech school, um, which was a bit controversial and confusing. And a lot of people were reflecting on the old tech schools of the past. And um, I guess what we did where we were working on the tech schools is really embraced what the tech schools mean. Tell me how how it works, because it's actually not even a school in the sense that you have students, is it? It's quite different. It's quite a departure from even thinking about a high versus a tech. It is. And um, you're right, we, we work with partner schools. So here at the Banyol Nolimbic Tech School, we have 19 partner schools. So, school, so students remain um, enrolled in their own high school, um, and we work with the local high schools in this area that have signed up to be part of the program, if you like. That includes independent Catholic and government schools and also special schools as, as part of that as well. How it works is it's it's very different for each area. So there's 10 tech schools across the state and they're all based on community needs. So they're driven by a committee which consists of industry, community, education, um, and they've, they've developed not only the design of the establishment but the learning program to be based on um, what's fit for their community so our um, particular program and design is, is quite different to, to some of the others um, the way our programs work is it's programs designed for year sevens right through to year 12s um, and they all they're all in together so it's not a step through program where you might have a year seven program come back and do something different for year eight and so forth um, they're all in the same space at the same time. And, and last year we ran, for example, at the end of last year, an artificial intelligence workshop where young people came in. Uh, they worked with mentors from Microsoft um, who supported them. And we had special needs students in there, year sevens right through to year 11s. So I guess for us, it's really about providing kids with the opportunity to solve real world problems and bringing in those mentors to support them along the way. The Chat Podathon is this great event where it brings 
people from all different schools together and even industry experts so that they can really learn about a really exciting field and part of technology that's obviously going to be a part of the future. I can just see this becoming our future so I'm interested in like learning about it and being able to apply it. Means that the people who will really be leading the future, the kids who are in the classroom today, will be able to take the experiences that we've got and the knowledge that Microsoft representatives have taught us into any jobs that we might have in the future. What was fantastic was that we had um, a range of students from different schools. Um, some of our students from, from Concord said it was two of the best days that they've ever had. They had such a great time um, and Concord's one of our special schools. So um, what, what was great was that every student, um, they worked in pairs, developed an artificial chatbot um, which will now sit on our website. And for, for the students, what it meant was that they got exposure to working in the way that industry does. One of our young people, actually, who was in that program, he actually, we realised, had been developing chatbots before he came along. But he'd been doing it the hard way and he'd been doing, you know, coding from scratch. So he actually sat down with Beck from Microsoft and who sort of blew her mind at what level he was at, this young 14-year-old boy. And what he did um, from those conversations was able to go home and he added language into his chatbot. And now he's, at, he's got a chatbot that he can actually ask, um, you know, what, question, uh, what questions was I given in maths in period three last week? And it actually generates response. So I wow. guess what it shows is that when you give young people the opportunity to be supported with the right mentors, um, they can actually excel in areas that they might not have had the opportunity to do at school. And really that's what the tech school is about. It's a, a convener, like a, a hub that provides kids with that opportunity to, to work on those real problems, bring in mentors from industry to support them. Um, it was a great program. The Mini Maker Fair is an event to promote the tech school and our involvement is to help the Mini Maker Fair work as smoothly as possible. We got various primary schools to come and kind of just enjoy themselves, like learn a bit about different tech things at high schools, see what's on offer and just get involved really. I like that you were free to just go around everywhere. The experience was really great. I enjoyed the robots and the presentation at the start. I really like the cement and the um, t-shirts and also the robots upstairs. I love the drone racing. That's fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, he was already like Australia champion or something, you know, so he's, he's someone who's passionate about that, showing off how tech is, you know, already getting him excited. And that's, that's so infectious, you know. But then the uh, virtual sound box as well, you know, that was yeah. great, you know, just seeing yeah. and, and seeing the range of things. I think it's really exciting. Yeah. It's such a diverse range of things that we showcase. And I think that's important for young people to see that it could be a simple circuitry um, activity. Um, we had we had people doing cementing there, and as you say, right through to Thomas, um, who's who's actually the world champion drone pilot um, flyer. Which, when the school discovered that, thought, oh my gosh, you know, and he he's like a rock star in in where he's from, and and um, when we were talking to his his father, who was there with him, he was sort of saying, you know, Thomas was was going down this particular path and going to go to uni and and in engineering and so forth. But um, he's doing so well in his career, um, and he flies around the world giving advice as a seventeen or eighteen year old on how to make drones. That um, that university um, path may not actually be where he needs to go, which I think is um, something that will more readily happen for our young people as they become entrepreneurs and, and as they discover things that actually this other path that was the standard way of going is um, not necessarily beneficial for them. I read too that you've done some things with Acme and, and there's something called MESS. So I'm trying to work out, can you explain explain some of the other ideas in the pipeline and you know what, what else there is, in the, particularly in that sort of art, creative kind of space? Yes. One of a couple of our exciting programs we're working with ACME, where we worked with um, ACME as mentors for young people and they developed projection art, which when we open our tech school um, this year will be on display for all to see, which will be pretty cool. So we've we've um, designed a lot of our building around the art space with um, projection to be included. 
And so we're hoping to have a lot of night events and have a lot of fun. We also worked with mess, as you say. So that's the pitch control there. Yeah, MESS stands for the Melbourne Electronic Sound Studio, which is based in North Melbourne. They're, they're actually not-for-profit and um, they have a range of really cool musical and sound machines. So what we did is we sent a group of our young people there to create um, soundbite music, basically, and using sound waves to create something really cool that sounds a bit like um, very eerie whale music. So when we open, um, we'll have our students playing live. Well, I wish you all the best and um, look forward to seeing how the school develops over the next few months and years. Thank you and thank you for the time to chat. To listen to the full conversation, find Short Films Teachers Love on SoundCloud or wherever you get your podcasts. For extra notes or community support, join our Facebook group today. This show is a proud member of the Education Podcast Network. Podcasts for educators, podcasts by educators. To learn more, visit edupodcastnetwork.com.